the folks here, they are bundled up, but they're ready for football as you get a look at First Energy Stadium in Cleveland, Ohio. This was the scene a few minutes ago. The dog pound in full roar as their Browns emerge from their tunnel, and they're ready to go as they get set to match up with the Pittsburgh Steelers. Pittsburgh set to take over again on offense. Roethlisberger on first down. He'll find Juju Smith-Schuster. And yeah, this will be a gain of five as he gets it to the 30. To Juju Smith One thing we do know, he's going to get his catches. So as they move forward defensively, got to continue to focus on not giving up the big play when he does catch the ball in the secondary. Ball on the 30. They'll come up with a second and five. Play fake to Connor. Now Roethlisberger. Olivier. Well, they go play fake. The problem is nobody was faked out. <laughs> and when no one's faked out, what's the end result? Quarterback gets hit. Third down. Third and 13. And this opening drive not going to plan. This is now third and 13. From the gun, it's Roethlisberger. And he hits his tight end, Ebron. And he will have a Steelers first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. A big play there as they get the conversion on third and 13. We expected this defense to be tested by this passing game coming into this one. And there's an example on this first possession of the game. So the line of scrimmage moves all the way across the 50 now as they come up first and 10. Roethlisberger. And his throw is incomplete. Eric Ebron, the big tight end, is intended target. And that'll bring up second down. You and I watched film yesterday, and he told me to watch his feet. Well, for whatever reason, his footwork just looked off on that throw. And you always love it when an ex-defensive back talks quarterback mechanics, right? Well, but you're good at it. Well, I, I try, all right? I don't know how good I am, but it doesn't take much to tell. His mechanics are off a little bit, exactly what you described. Footwork, that led to the incompletion. As his old brain remembers, when I see five wide receivers on the field as a defender, I know the ball's coming out hot. They expected it and got there and popped it free. So back-to-back -back incompletions, and that has him staring at a third and ten. To throw again is Roethlisberger. Setting up the screen, this is Samuels. And he's going to be out of bounds, but not before he takes it inside the 40. A Steeler first down on the pickup of 11 yards. I like the screen being called here early in the game, especially on the opening drive, because, Brandon, when guys come out of the locker room, especially those pass rushers, they are so amped up to get to the quarterback that you can use that against them, and a screen pass is a great way of doing it. A lot of teams against good pass rushing teams, they want to run the screen 10 to 12 times in a game. This will be a gain of about eight to the 27-yard line. A good pickup there. Eight yards on the first down completion. on the pickup brings up second and two at the Browns' 27-yard line. Facing a second and two after that last catch, good for eight yards. On a jet sweep, this is Johnson. And he's in. Touchdown, Steelers. Deontay Johnson, 27 yards. And the Steelers take the ball down the field and score on their opening drive. So really a nice drive there for the first points of the game. And how about the fact that it was a run by the wide receiver that got him into the end zone, Brandon? You know, these guys, we know they're not afraid to open up the playbook, and they showed it to us right there on the first drive. Boswell good with the extra point, and that makes the score 7-0.
Chris Boswell. To kick Boswell off. now to kick it away after the touchdown. Now Donovan Peoples-Jones. And able to take it past the 25 and up to the 28-yard line. And now Cleveland geared up to take the field. First and 10 at their own 28-yard line. Mayfield going to lead the Browns up now first and 10 at their own 28-yard line. A first carry now for Nick Chubb. It's Big Vince Williams who made the tackle. It's time for them to be good teammates right here. And what I mean by that is possess the ball for a little while. Get at least two first downs. Give their defense a chance to settle down a little bit after they give up a touchdown. The last run good for two. Here's second and eight. From the gun, Mayfield. He'll get this one underneath to Hunt. And he slips up past the 45 before being tackled. 19 yards there on the catch and run. Just the first quarter of a tackling going to be so important going forward. They've got to limit plays like that. And that's something when you see it happen early in the game and they don't get him on the ground, you can always tell that they were concerned about it going in. Because I can just tell you from my days, I remember being in college and wearing all off season about our season open opponent, and they had a receiver that could shake and bake with the best of them. I tackled him on the first pass of the game, and the relief was incredible. I ended up having a pretty decent ball game. But if I had missed him, it would have been a long story. night. So after the run for no gain, here's second and 10. Mayfield hands it off to Chubb. Room here to run. And he is out of bounds, but not before he's inside the 30. A first down there on a pickup of 25. And a nice carry and a first down for Cleveland. A nice pickup there by Nick Chubb, who's a bright spot for this Cleveland offense. He finished second in the league in rushing in 2019 with nearly 1,500 yards on the ground and got into the end zone eight times. And how about this for durability? Has not missed a game in his NFL career. What a bounce back from a big-time knee injury while at the University of Georgia. Two yards, the loss, second and 12. Aaron Donald's the name most people think about at the defensive tackle position, but an all-pro last year alongside him, Cameron Hayward. An absolute nightmare to try and block. And he gets into the backfield on that play and finishes it off with a loss. They'll try to throw here. Mayfield, he's going to go up top for the end zone. And, oh, not only did he drop it, he dropped it in the end zone. Intended for Austin. Normally being a big-bodied receiver, plays to their advantage downfield, go up and make the catch, take the hit, and pick up yardage. But in this case, the hit was timed really well and popped it free from his grasp. An incomplete pass on that last play, and that means they'll need to come up with something here on third down. Mayfield into heavy traffic and it's intercepted. Joe Hayden, the veteran with a pick and a big turnover there as his guys will get the football back. After the interception, here's Roethlisberger. Open man completes it to Smith-Schuster and he's brought down but not before they get it across the 20-yard line. First play of the drive going for 14 and also going for a first down. Counting down toward the midway point in quarter one. Throwing now, Roethlisberger on first down. That one into the hands of his tailback, Samuels. It'll be a gain of six, and that'll make this a second down. Just about every quarterback is trained to really look downfield first before you come back and make a nice safe throw. And in this case, that's exactly what he did. Found his running back, let him create some space, and it turned out to be a nice play for the offense. They go play action with Roethlisberger. He'll find Smith-Schuster. That's complete. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. A gain of 13, it's a first down. Well, that certainly has to feel good. It's not all the time that the play caller should get all the credit. Sometimes I think in the huddle, the quarterback just says, hey, who's going to make a play for me? I just need something right here. And the end result there, nice first down. Drive keeps moving. 
And now a throw on first down there, but it's incomplete. Chase Claypool, the intended target, but it's going to be second down. That's what you're going to need to do against those big receivers. You got to get in there and get physical with them. That time he got in close, got in tight, and knocked the ball away. Ball on the 42 as they come up second and 10. Ben to throw again. Over the middle, hauled in by Smith-Schuster. And he'll get it out a couple yards shy of midfield at the 48. They get six, that'll leave them with third and four. Good throw, good catch, but I really like the route. The drag and being able to run away from defenders, hard to stick with them for that long. Yeah, better against man than zone, or? Better against man, because now you're running away from someone, and you're not running into a defensive player in another zone. He's got a man open. It's Chase Claypool. And he has the first down yardage before they bring him down right at the 45. First down, Steelers. That's a play that will likely be forgotten when you talk about big moments in this game. But plays like this are critical to keep drives going. And if points result, we'll call this play significant. <laughs> On first and 10, it's Roethlisberger. And that's going to be incomplete. Too tough to hold on to that one. It's second down. I think that was good strategy there, trying to go right back to him after the last completion. But this time, the defense was all over it, and they got there to break that one up. An incomplete pass on first down. That leads to a second and ten. Throwing again, it's Roethlisberger. And the Browns' pressure gets to him that time, and he's going to go down. It was Miles Garrett that time who got in there and brought him down. Enough takes to start to have a good drive, quite like a big loss on a sack, does it? Now, now they're looking at a third and long, and suddenly the momentum shifted to the other side of the football. And old Mo is a very, very fickle man. Now Ben on third and long. And that is incomplete. So many times we see teams go on the road and want to lean on their running game, but this crew just announced they're going to try and air it out and make hay downfield. On fourth down, here comes the Steeler punter Jordan Berry to kick it away. And he'll get this away into the icy winter air. And they call it 38 yards on the punt, no return. And the Browns will take over, first and 10. Second drive coming up here for Cleveland as they return to the field on offense. They had the interception last time. It led to the opening touchdown. So now 7-0 the score as they start first and 10. They start on the ground with Nick Chubb. And a short pickup there as he'll take this up to right around the 20. Cameron Hayward in on the tackle. Well, any lane that might have been open there was closed pretty quickly. And that was because the defense in front, they won that battle at the point of attack at the line of scrimmage. They used great leverage, held their spot, and stacked him up. Throwing on second and eight. Mayfield, pressure comes and down goes Baker Mayfield. T.J. Watt, the all-pro in there to take him down. And here the pressure from the outside linebacking spot. And normally when that happens and they're able to get home, that means the other guys on his team helped him out a lot. That they occupied people to allow it to be no less than a one-on-one -on -one situation allows him to get home. Going deep here for Landry. And that is incomplete. Oh, he had a defender right there with him to force that to the ground. And fourth down now coming up. Every offense tells you they start fast. That's not unusual at all. But this group, they've yet to get much rolling through their first two drives. It looks like they have to give up the football again after this one. On fourth down, here's Jamie Gillen on to punt. It's a 47-yard punt, but they did give up 10 on the return. And the Steelers will go on offense here, first and 10. And Pittsburgh getting set to take the field. They've got a 7-0 lead in the football as well as they start out first and 10.
They'll run with the NC State man. It's Jalen Samuels. Just a yard on the pickup there, and it'll bring up a second and nine. Well, sometimes you just have to give credit to the defense. Great job there at the point of attack, holding up. They won their battles at the line of scrimmage, left him no space to try and run. A really nice job swarming to the ball carrier. On second and nine, Roethlisberger. In trouble, and he's taken down. Olivier Vernon able to drop him that time for his second sack of the evening. And that is the third sack this offensive line has allowed this first quarter. Man, that puts him on pace. Let me do the rudimentary math here. To be sacked 12 times in a game, I know he's not going to go for that. I wonder if it's going to reshape what they decide to do on offense in terms of play calling. Well, I can tell you what, when he popped up, shaking his head, frustrated right now behind center. And the throw there going to be incomplete. Well, that play was certainly a little bit different because on the previous play, he was sacked. This time, protection a lot better. Had time to survey the field and still couldn't find an open receiver. Here's Jordan Berry now. As the drive goes backwards, so he's on to punt it away. That's taken on the 25. Now a hit and a loose football. And it's picked up by the Steelers. Was hoping to make a play there on the return with his speed. Instead, he makes a play for the other side. Yeah, and how many times have we heard coaches say, you know, sometimes it's not really about those X's and O's we drop. It's about those Jimmys and Joes. <laughs> and when you have a punt returner, he's one of those Jimmys and Joes, one of the best athletes. He's unable to make the play that they were seeking, though. And he's got his man on the crossing route. That's Landry. And he'll get it out near the 40 to the 39. Five yards on the catch there, brings up second down. The goal for any offense versus his own defense, find the holes where guys are available and put the ball on the receiver before any defender can step up and fill it. They did it well there. Perfectly executed crossing route. Looking to throw again on second down. Mayfield, open man is Higgins. That one, a first down pickup of eight. This has to go down as one of the simpler routes in the playbook, but oh so effective. Nice completion there, keeps the sticks moving. On first down, they'll run with Chubb. And he'll get this one across midfield and down into Steeler territory. The ball carrier. They give him four yards there. It'll be second and six. And result of that one, a nice four-yard gain. So you can use that to set up your play-action game, or you can come right back and continue to run the football because as an offensive play caller, you're on schedule and feeling pretty good about your next couple of calls. A first carry now for Kareem Hunt. And he'll get this into enemy territory, but not by much as he's down to the 48. Defensively, we always know that he is tough in run support, and I think the way that he gets there is he understands what an offense is going to do before the ball's even snapped. A great job of scouting prior to the game, then reading, reacting, and taking the right path to the ball carrier. Mayfield from the gun on third down. And he's going to go down. They sack him back at the 42. That's Vince Williams who gets the sack. Partner, the Mike linebacker, the middle linebacker, has so many different responsibilities. How excited do you think he was to get home with that blitz? Yeah, he wants a sack. He got it. Here's Jamie Gillen now as he'll kick it away for the second time. And that hits at the six and carries into the end zone for a touchback. Pittsburgh's offense now heading back out onto the field. They've got the lead. Last time had to punt it, though. What's the key to this drive? I think it's leverage. Ah, the leverage. big guys up front. You know the motivational speech on the sideline is, guys, give us an opportunity. Protect the passer, create space for our runners, and let's go ahead and get these guys. Low man wins. Let's go do it on this drive. <laughs> we'll watch that leverage on this drive. And they're going to stop it right at the line of scrimmage. Just no cutback lane to be found once whatsoever second and ten i know that speed is the hallmark of today's nfl game but the key to good rushing defense is still having your linebackers set the edge officially nothing on that last run they'll try again second and ten from the shotgun it's roethlisberger 
His throw incomplete. Juju Smith-Schuster, the intended receiver that time. And it's third down. A lot of times it's that first read that you have. Maybe you get it in pre-snap. He locked in on his target, but he was covered quite well. And that one's incomplete. The Steelers on third down. They've converted three out of five thus far. This is third and ten. Out of the gun, it's Roethlisberger. Open man, Smith-Schuster, it's complete. And he will have a Steelers first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. But one of the ways the quarterbacks keep all the receivers alive in a play, never lock in on any one guy. Make sure you keep your eyes moving, scan the field. And here he finds the open guy for a nice pickup. They'll throw on first down with Roethlisberger. And a quick throw here. That's complete. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. 13 yards as they've got the connection working. His second catch in a row. First down. Shotgun handoff to Samuels. And taking it across midfield and just shy of the 40. And, oh, Johnson dinged up a bit. Still down. Hopefully nothing serious. While the trainers take a look, we'll step aside. So a first and 10 upcoming from Brown's territory now at the 41. Here's Roethlisberger. Oh, that was dangerous. Threw it into coverage, almost picked. But instead, they'll keep it on second down. They've given up a few first downs on this drive, but getting the incompletion there, that should give them something to build on and maybe turn the tide. Here now is second and 10, again from the 41. Here's Roethlisberger to throw. Able to hit his target, Claypool. And they're gonna have another first down as he's gonna be tackled at the Browns 24 yard line. It'll be a gain of 17 at a Pittsburgh first. First down, Steelers. First carry for James Conner. And down inside the 15 he goes. 11 more yards that go around, a first down as well. A good carry and a first down by James Conner. And this Pittsburgh team is really hoping he's back in form because last year the entire Pittsburgh offense suffered without Ben Roethlisberger, at quarterback. James Conner only 715 combined yards, but in 2018, he was a Pro Bowl running back. Combined yardage that year, 1,470. They're open for 2018 James Conner in 2020. Three yards on the pickup there, and it'll be second down. Some of the most unselfish players on any football team, defensive tackles, because we ask them to just eat up blocks and allow other people to make tackles. And when he can make a play himself, as we just saw there, that's a big day. This is caught, and he'll be brought down here at the three-yard line. Complete two Seven yards on the pickup there, and now they'll have it first and goal. Now, that was pretty. They executed that curl route versus zone coverage, and that changes things a little bit because against man, it's often a tight curl, a tight, sharply run route. Against zone, you're just looking for that open spot, that dead area, so you may curl a little bit wider just to get to that place. And usually a tight window. He fired a bullet in there for the completion. Yeah, he's able to push his way forward somehow for a gain of about two yards. Second down now. To me, that's a terrific run on first and goal of the three. They got two yards. I'd line right back up and give it to him again. They'll try to run it. This is Connor. And this time he is in. Yes. Touchdown. James Connor taking it in. And the Steelers, they broaden their lead. 
people always talk about one of his biggest strengths running the football vision and he found the spot there went into the end zone you're exactly right about that and wasn't just the vision right once he saw the gap decisiveness made up his mind and about the power to finish the play not only did he get good blocking he created his own space as well extra point put through by boswell and it's now 14 to nothing Chris Boswell now to kick it away after the touchdown. Peoples-Jones returning. And he's up across the 25 and down at the 28. Heading out as a Cleveland offense now as they get set to take over here. They've shown precious little here offensively thus far as they try again with a first down now. They'll start with Hunt on the ground. And this will go for five up to the 33. Number 27. They'd love to just strike back with a touchdown right here. And if it's a long play, so be it. But the main goal, get a couple of first downs, run some plays, run some clock, allow their defense to get a chance to catch their breath, settle down, and relax a little bit after they just gave up a score. After the pickup of five, here's second and five. Now Mayfield. Looking left side, that's caught by Landry. And he slips up past the 45 before being tackled. A gain of 13, it's a first down. When you struggle out of offense, you're looking for anything possible to get you going. Sometimes you do it like basketball teams that don't normally press. You put a press on, bring people to life, make them move a little bit quicker. Maybe that'll help them as they head towards the half. A run for Nick Chubb. He'll be taken down at the 48 for a pickup of two yards. Well, sometimes as a running back, you've got to be able to improvise when the hole's not where you expect it to be. But in this case, there wasn't any improvisation that he could do that was going to work. Kind of like if you're trying to be a comedian on open mic night at the improv, and you run into a tough crowd. From just shy of midfield, Mayfield over the middle and into the hands of his receiver Landry. And they're going to have themselves another first down as the tackle's made at the Steelers' 40. That'll move the sticks for the Browns, a gain of 12. Well, these guys have definitely been outplayed in the first half, but I like their countenance. I like the way that they haven't panicked out there, the way they're carrying themselves. They're starting to move the ball, and what you have to do, maintain your poise and start to put together some drives. Mayfield throwing complete there to Hooper. It'll be a pickup of 10 yards. And that'll bring up a second in just about a few inches here. When you execute a drag or a crossing route really well and give them a chance to let it develop a little bit, you can gain some significant yardage hitting your tight end on that one. So not quite a first down just yet as they come up on second and less than a yard. They go play action. Mayfield. And he gets it to his running back, Nick Chubb. No gain there, and it's going to bring up a third down. Usually the offense has an answer to anything a defense throws at them, including a safety valve. And that's what they did on that play. They went there, but the defense still made an excellent play and held them to no gain. The Browns on third down. 0 for 3 to this point. They could use a conversion. They're looking at third in the nose of the football. They'll run for it. Here's Chubb. And he's able to pick up the first before he's taken down at the 26. So just four yards on the pickup, but that's good enough to extend the drive. On third down, that's a good job of situational football and understanding where the first down marker was and getting there. This offense finding its legs now. Here's another first and ten. Here's Mayfield. Under a heavy rush, and down he goes. Tyson Alualu. 
Able to drop him for a loss of four from his defensive tackle spot. I'm starting to feel for that quarterback back there. I mean, you know me. Normally, don't have a lot of empathy for the QB, right? In this case, definitely. He's been on constant duress this entire game. I don't know how he's surviving back there. And to think, there's still a long way to go in this football game. Gets this to Kareem Hunt, his running back. And he'll wind up getting about six out of that as that's going to lead us to the two-minute warning. Brings up third and nine. Play number nine on the drive coming up, and they need nine yards on third down. Working out of the gun, Mayfield. Sideline throw, that's caught by Landry. And he'll be out of bounds as he gets this down about the 21 or 22. Just a five-yard pickup, but it leads to fourth down. People worry about throwing the out route because often it can get jumped, and that can turn into an either an incompletion or an interception. But not on that one. Everything came together, and he catches it and goes over the sideline. A 38-yard attempt. The kick by Parkey is good. And they will get themselves on the board here at 14-3. So the field goal there caps what winds up to be an 11-play drive. Well, Parker, that's a lot of offense to run there to only get three points. So I just wonder, are they going to recycle those plays because they were successful in getting three? Or do you go to another section of the playbook trying to find ones that get you into the end zone, get you six? it in the middle of the end zone and he'll just sit on this one as their drive will start at the 25 the Steelers ready to take over on offense they've had a very solid first half and as we near the end of that first half they're just looking for a little more on top of their lead right now and when you put together a game plan on offense you put together what you think is going to be the best possible scenario right hey we're going to score these are the plays that are going to do it but you also put together your counters, meaning after they make adjustments to what you're doing, what do we have to go to next? The adjustment to the adjustment. Exactly. So I can't wait to see if we come out of the half, how they're going to go about doing things. Do you just keep running what you ran before, or do you go to your counters expecting those adjustments to happen? Before that, we'll see the end here of this first half. From the gun, it's Roethlisberger. Completion here to Claypool. And this will be stopped at the 44. That one good for seven yards. Seven yards, the pickup on the pitch and catch. Fired that one in there, able to make connection on a nice in route. With those faster passes when they're going that fast, any hesitation as a quarterback that the deflection, if you miss, might be bigger and lead to an interception? Yeah, and the deflection works both ways. Maybe a defender gets a hand in the way and it pops in the air. And sometimes you throw it so hard your receiver can't handle it, and he pops it up in the air for the defenders to grab as well. But a moot point there is they were able to connect. Give him two yards on that play, and that's going to make it third down and less than a yard. To throw again is Roethlisberger. This is Johnson. He's got it. Now the Steelers use the first of their three timeouts as they get the stoppage with just under 50 seconds remaining in half number one. From the 34 now, here's first and 10. Again, it's Roethlisberger. He'll get that one complete to Connor. And he'll be out of bounds as he gets it down to the 30 there. They'll contain him to just four. Second down. All defenses worry that whenever anyone catches the ball and has a head of steam come out of the backfield, it could turn into a big play with missed tackles or he runs through people. But they were right there waiting, and they stopped him for a minimal gain. 
four yards on that last completion, so that sets up second and six. He'll find Smith-Schuster. That's complete. And he's going to be out down inside the 20 at the 15. 15 yards on the play, first down. And, and now with that completion, he's north of 200 yards here in the first half. And he's going to break our statistician, Marvin, isn't he? Because Marvin right now is just tallying it up. Hope his hand doesn't hurt too much doing this or keeps hitting the calculator. But my goodness, what a start he is off to. By the end of this game, he could have monster numbers. He just wants to continue to be accurate. Now the Steelers use the second of their three timeouts as they'll stop it with a little over 30 seconds to go in the first half of play. Second and two, first down marker at the five-yard line. Ben to throw again. To the goal line, but it's incomplete. That was a touchdown if he could have hung on. Instead, it was a well-timed collision to jar that one free. by Denzel Ward. They're trying to keep the drive going. This will be play number eight. It's third and two. Now Roethlisberger. Got his man. It's caught for a Steelers touchdown. Vance McDonald there to make the grab. And the Steelers are going to add on to their lead. So three drives, three touchdowns, and they're a PAT from going up 21 to three. And there's no doubt in my mind, you're liking what you're seeing so far, aren't you? It's unbelievable. Yeah. Like a well-oiled machine, if you will. What's really it tough, though, good. that defense, the they're leaping the shadows at this point. They don't know which way to go. They're being hit in every direction, and they have no answers thus far. Chris Boswell now to kick it away after the touchdown. Peoples-Jones returning. And they will wrangle him down a couple yards shy of the 30. Now the Browns offense, they get ready to head back onto the field. And we're under 20 seconds to go in the half. I'm guessing the wise play here is be safe. That is the wise play because if you think about trying to fool them here, here's what you're facing. You're facing a loosened up secondary playing a lot deeper than normal. So even if you run some type of misdirection, you're only gonna fool them for a second or so. And guess what? They're so deep, they're really not gonna be out of position. Take the knee, get to the locker room. Now the Browns will use the first of their three timeouts as they'll stop it with 13 seconds to play in half number one. Ready to take over again on offense. Out comes Cleveland. And with time quickly fading here in the second quarter, not sure how aggressively, offensively they want to play this. I think we'll find out just how much they trust their guys in this situation if they decide to take a shot. From the 36, Mayfield. And finding the tight end, Hooper. Now a timeout taken. Perhaps a chance for one more quick play and then another timeout if they hurry. We'll see. Mayfield on first down. This pass complete to Higgins. And he gets this to the other side of midfield across the 45 before going out. A good play there as the Browns strike for 16 and a first down. Yeah. 
So even though it's first down, here's the field goal unit on now to try to get three before halftime. They spot it on the midfield stripe, so it is a 60-yard attempt here. And this kick is not going to be close. It's well short, well right to boot. And this score will stay right where it is. And this is one of the risks you run when you attempt a long field goal. If you miss, the defense takes over to spot of the placement. So now they've got a chance to get one more drive in before halftime. They've got good starting field position as they come up here first and 10, right at the 50-yard line. Now Ben going to give this one to Connor. He'll be taken down at the 48 for a pickup of two yards. So we reach halftime in what's been a fairly one-sided game so far. As we'll send you down to Orlando, we check in with Jonathan Coachman for our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach, so time for the second half as the Steelers have the lead, and they will also be receiving the football here to start the third quarter. The Cleveland offense ready to go. And they've got to be a little bit frustrated about that last drive, missed field goal always hurts a team because you know you've put something out there you've given yourself a chance you're in range and the ball doesn't go through the post but it's not something to panic about i don't believe just keep playing and keep going this defense is just flat getting after it they have not given up much of anything in the run game case in point right there a three-yard loss to start the drive they'll look to make that up and then some on second and 13. Pressure comes, and the Steelers take him down. T.J. Watt, his second sack of the night. So one quick, easy analysis about why they've struggled so far. They keep putting themselves in third and long situations. They just took another sack right there. And the offensive film session tomorrow may be a little longer than it normally is. <laughs> Not a lot of positive grades will be handed out thus far. Third and long for Mayfield. That one is caught by Hunt. And they're able to bring him down at the 20. He did his best to just get four out of that, but not enough. And now fourth down. That's certainly playing down in distance very well by the defense, isn't it? Take whatever you want underneath, by all means. Here's Jamie Gillen now, as he's on to punt for Cleveland. It's a 42-yard punt. They keep him to just a yard on the return. And the offense will take over with a new set of downs. Time for the Steelers' offense now to get set for their first possession of half number two. They were able to get the ball back here, didn't surrender any points. Now they'll look to add to that lead. Now how about the boost the defense gave them? Going right out on the field, shutting them down, not giving up any points, and turning the ball back over. They want to do their part now and show them a little respect and some gratitude by scoring some points. And to get a little more cushion. Five yards on the catch there brings up second down. Not a big window to throw. Coverage wasn't too bad there. Yeah, they had him under wraps pretty well, but somehow able to muscle his way open and catch the ball. Second and five after the five-yard completion on first down. Now it's Roethlisberger. And yes, complete to the tight end, McDonald. And he'll get it out a couple yards shy of midfield at the 48. Seven yards there and a first down. The start for them near flawless. Defense gets him a three and out. Two quick pass connections on offense. So that's how a team works together. Just what you described. Get them the ball, give them a little momentum, and they're capitalizing off of that. Thanks a lot, guys. Now Roethlisberger on first down. To the right side to Eric Ebron. And he'll go down, but not before getting this inside the 30. A good pick up there, 26 yards. And while we may be looking at the scoreboard, this offense certainly is not because they're showing no signs of backing down, even with a three-score lead here in the third quarter. I think they keep taking their shots. They've seen blown leads happen throughout this league. They don't want to fall victim to it themselves. Officially, it's a one-yard loss. That's going to bring up second and 11. When a draw works, it can be a thing of beauty. But when it doesn't, oh, it can be ugly. And in this case, loss of yardage ugly. Second and 11 now. From the shotgun, it's Roethlisberger. 
toward the right sideline, but it's incomplete. Pass thrown away and incomplete. It's third down and the 11. An incomplete pass on that last play, and that means they'll need to come up with something here on third down. Out of the gun, it's Roethlisberger. And that is intercepted by the Pro Bowl quarterback, Denzel Ward. Denzel Ward. Now they needed a break. They needed to make a play here in the third quarter. Defensively, they did that. Now they got to go quickly and get some points on the board. And the best part is that they made their own break. Taking the ball away. Now they just look at their offense and say, guys, let's go. Come on, capitalize on this one. Alex Highsmith there on the tackle. Well, that's just a pile of bodies there, and that's when you kind of find out who's a tough guy, right? Who can stand up and make a play? It was only a three-yard run, but for both sides, they had to walk away from that field like, okay, I can stand up when the going gets tough in here. From the 44, Mayfield. That's caught over the middle, Hooper. Mayfield, a gain of three last play. This time they double it and pick up six. That's a staple of this offense. Drag route to the tight end. Yeah, he's unable to use his size to break off much more yardage after the catch, but still an effective gain nonetheless. This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. On third down, it's Nick Chubb. And he's going to have a first down as he's brought down at the 44-yard line. For five yards on the play there as the drive will continue. I don't know about you, but that almost felt like old-time football there. Third and two is not necessarily just a running down anymore. A lot of times they want to throw the ball. They went back to the roots and powered forward and got the first down. On first and ten, Mayfield. To the right side, and he's got Landry complete. And he'll go out of bounds after taking it a little further down inside the 40. Five yards on the catch there, brings up second down. They like going to him in the slot. He catches another one. I think this comes under the heading of, until they stop him, why not go back to him? He has something going really well. Great working relationship with the guy throwing the ball, and they keep making the connection. They go with Chubb on second down, and he'll get this pretty close to a first down as he's tackled at the Steelers' 34. It'll go as a gain of six that time, and it moves the chains as well. I think they like this drive a little bit better there, partner. Running game helping out, picking up some of the slack, because remember the last drive, they went three and out. Still in search of their first touchdown of the game, but they're on the move, first and 10. On the ground, it's Chubb. And he'll get a little over two, maybe a full three down to the 32-yard line. He's tackled at the... Oh, that's a real nice job there by the defensive front. They just engaged and held their ground. But how about the guy who made the play? We often talk about whether they take a good first step or not. Many times, you just don't take any step. Just get your feet moving, get your body going. And then once he made the read, he was able to make the play. And Mayfield just getting the play off. Got an open man. That's David Njoku, the tight end. And he'll be out of bounds, able to get it down to the 25 there. It's a game Let's not quibble about the game there on second down. That was a positive play because that was a take-what-you-can-guess situation. Got out to the tight end. Now it gives a much better opportunity to convert on third down. This will be play number seven on the drive. Third and a yard. Play fake. Mayfield. And he's got his man. That's Landry. And they are able to stop him, but he does take it all the way to the two. So much for the run on third and one. Instead, it's a big chunk in the pass game. First down. A nice job there, Charles. They picked up the blitz, were able to complete the pass. That had the total feel of a quarterback in control. Red blitz, got him into the right protection scheme, so he doesn't get hit back there. He's got a chance to step up with Supreme. And he is into the end zone. Touchdown, Cleveland. Taking it in from two yards out. And the Browns make some inroads here on that deficit. That's a score you felt they had to have here in the third quarter to get back in this game. And you know that there was an emphasis on their side. Hey, we know this. We know where we are. But sometimes that binds you up so much that you try too hard you don't get the score. A perfect combination of urgency 
yet relaxed enough to get it done. Turkey adds the extra point, and it makes the score 21 to 10. Six. A solid return, pretty good field position. They'll start at the 32. The Steelers' offense now, they get ready to head back on the field. Their lead down to two scores after the touchdown a moment ago as they start with a first and 10. shake off the interception he'll look to throw Ebron with it over the middle not much there only a yard well the strategy was evident there get it to your tight end and make it a one-on-one -on -one play with a cornerback who's usually going to win that one the tight end but not there not in this situation how about the corner defeating that logic and making a really nice tackle On second down, Samuels. Not much there. Maybe a couple up to the 35. Early down stuff to put this offense in a precarious position. We know that securing the point of attack, especially against the big body guys in the middle of this D, has got to be priority one. It looks like a nickel set now for the Browns on third down. Now it's Roethlisberger. And this is going to be incomplete. It certainly didn't appear that that's where he wanted to go with the ball initially, so he tried to get something out of it by dumping it off to his running back unsuccessfully. Fourth down. Here's Jordan Berry now as he's on to punt for Pittsburgh. That'll be a 44-yard boot, just a yard on the return as he's covered up quickly. And that will come the offense as they take over. And now Cleveland geared up to take the field. I guess they have to feel a little gratified to at least get on the board last time, but still work to do. No doubt about it. I wonder now if they're going to try to increase the urgency a little bit, maybe pump up the pace, maybe go two-minute. Who knows? Let's see what they decide to do. They begin this drive with Chubb. Fights forward for only about a yard up to the 21. Nick Chubb, the ball yeah, things were pretty stacked up there in the middle of the line. A lot of bodies, not much space. I think ultimately, he was fortunate to get anything out of that run. The run only got a yard. Here's second and nine. From the shotgun, it's Mayfield. Gets this to Kareem Hunt, his running back. Mayfield's it's a gain of five on the play, and they're going to have a third down. That might feel like a little bit of a lost opportunity there for the offense because the defense brought pressure that time. And sometimes against that, you can get it out to your running back, and it can turn into a big gain downfield. But what a nice job they did getting to him quickly and holding him to a short gain. Mayfield from the gun on third down. And the Steeler pressure too much here. He's going down. Alex Highsmith able to get outside the numbers and drop him for a loss of a yard. My man, it's been a rough night for that offensive line, and it's only getting rougher. Five sacks now that they've given up in this contest so far. It feels like the witching hour out here, doesn't it? Okay, stupid question. What's the witching, witching hour? Yeah, the witching hour. That's when everything goes haywire late at night. 36 yards on the punt with no return. And possession will switch hands first and 10. Pittsburgh set to take over again on offense. And they're coming off a three and out, my friend. I think they've got to look at that play sheet 
and go to a spot that they haven't gone before. Time to shake things up a little bit to try and get this offense moving. Okay, so how do you do that? How do you shake things up? You look at what you've called before, realize it hasn't worked <laughs> Go to so something well, else. And maybe you try and find one of those special plays from one of your better players, and maybe try and hit something big and get things going in the excitement area. And he's got his man, the tight end, McDonald. Now, after the completion, we're going to get a timeout, an injured player. While he gets attended to, we'll step aside. down at Samuels and they'll get him down as he's inside the 40 13 yard gain yet again just like last play sometimes it's hard to believe but there are times this game is about patience isn't it has had the game he expected but that run there that may get him going I was just gonna say maybe that gives him a little juice because you're right he struggled especially in that first half yeah and I know the great ones always think to themselves just hang in there I'm just one big carry away from busting this open, that's a good start for him. He'll be hit down at the 33, five yards on the play. Five yards on the catch there, brings up second down. They gave up the completion there, but this is what zone defenses count on, catching the ball and not much run after the catch. One quarter remains here on a Sunday night. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. Throwing again on second down. Roethlisberger, and he's able to get it down to the 25-yard line. Nine yards to pick up there, and it's a first down. Another nice pick up through the air, and I think a lot of people might expect them to run the ball in this situation, Brandon, but with this lead, they're electing to throw the football. Swings, slants, quick outs, things that they consider safe. Go. Go. On first and 10, it's Roethlisberger. He's going to go down here, a sack. They push him back to the 34. Larry Ogunjobi in for the sack. You never want to give up a sack. From the O-line's perspective, they hate it for several reasons, especially because they felt like they let little brother down back there in the pocket. Oh, no doubt. They have a ton of pride, and they go into every job wanting to keep that guy clean. They want that uniform with no grass stains, no dirt, nothing on it. But it's really, really difficult. You're talking about some terrific athletes who are trying to put him on the ground. A pickup of about three yards as he's taken down at the 31. A three yard well, offensively, that's the mismatch that you want. You want to force a linebacker to try and cover your back out of the backfield, out in some open space. But linebackers nowadays, they run like backs, and they take a lot of pride in covering. What a nice play he made there in the open field. Able to hit his target, Claypool. And he's not going to sniff the first down here. He stopped at the 25. The completion good for only six, and that'll bring up fourth. Whether you're playing West Coast offense or not, one of the maxims of the West Coast offense is you're either throwing a touchdown or a check down. In other words, look for the big shot, but be smart. I think they did exactly that on that play. They didn't get the first down, but they're taking care of the ball well. Yeah, and being rightly cautious with that lead here in the second half. Makes the score. So they settle for just the three, but clearly right now anything helps trying to salt this one away in the fourth. Without a doubt, obviously a touchdown probably would have been the final nail to finish this thing off, but they still ate up time, got points. So while it's not mission accomplished, it's darn close. After the successful field goal try, here's Boswell to send it away. 
Peoples Jones returning. And it's a pretty good return here as he'll get this up to the 29. And now the Browns coming out on the field. These guys had to punt their last possession, and that's become too familiar of a refrain. Too many of these drives just wound up going nowhere. But you know how in baseball, when the pitcher gets a base hit and he's on base, they bring his jacket out to him to keep him warm? A lot of times the punter goes to the sideline, puts on sweatpants or a wrap over his leg to keep it warm. He might need a massage from the trainer right now <laughs> from all the work he's getting. Now the first play of the drive there is incomplete. Jarvis Landry, Pro Bowl wideout, the intended receiver. But it'll be second down. Great coverage there all around. Really didn't have many options to throw the football. Very little chance that that one was going to be completed. Every receiver was locked up. Here's second and 10 now from the 29. From the gun, Mayfield. He'll get this one underneath to Hunt. They get seven out of that, so they're left with a third and three. You got the big lead defensively. Willing to give them that underneath stuff, right? And this is why you work on your tackling. Tackle them after the catch, inbounds, keep the clock running. Just go ahead and bleed the game out that way. The Browns on third down. They've converted a third of their opportunities, three for nine. This time it's third and three. Flushed out right. He can run for it, and he will. No one there to help out downfield, but no problem. Scrambling for 22 to first. We just saw a nice example of why teams often bring in baseball guys to teach quarterbacks how to slide in key situations. You want to protect your franchise guy. Make sure he doesn't get hurt. He did exactly that on that play. A perfect slide to avoid the big hit and pick up a first down. Now a throw for the left sideline, and he's got it. And the stop here will come at the 38-yard line. Three yards the game there, second down. One thing you're hoping for when you run drag routes, you're able to hit a receiver in stride, and he can pick up a lot of yardage after the catch. But in this situation, the defense was effective, able to stop him before he could get a good head of steam going. To throw again on second down. Mayfield throwing over the middle, and it's incomplete. Rashard Higgins was the one he was looking for, and that'll make it third down. From the snap, he certainly looked like he knew where he wanted to go with the ball, but surprise, that guy was covered. So that took his attention elsewhere to no avail. First down marker at the 31. It's third down. Now Mayfield. Yeah, that one's going to be knocked away and incomplete. Has to be a little bit of frustration there. Back-to-back -back incompletions. Receivers blanketed on both attempts, this time on third down. Now Cody Parkey out to try the field goal. This officially a 55-yard attempt. And this is going to wind up left. Well struck, but it's no good. And this score will stay right where it is. So another long try for three and another kick that comes up lacking. Yeah, this isn't going to do any wonders for his field goal percentage. But you have to figure as a head coach that when you send a guy out there to try and kick from that distance, it's a 50-50 proposition at best. Throwing now, Roethlisberger on first down. He'll find Smith-Schuster, that's complete. And he'll get it out to midfield. Looks like, yeah, they'll spot it right at midfield at the 50. In so many ways, throwing the hitch route is actually one of the safer things an offense can do. Get the ball out to the receiver as fast as possible, hope he's got man-to-man -man coverage, and hope that his athleticism wins on the perimeter. From midfield now, here's Roethlisberger. Open man, completes it to Smith-Schuster. And he gets this inside the 35-yard line. 16 yards, a first down. The passing game continues to be their friend, even with a stable lead here in the fourth, Charles. They're going back to that well. Yeah, with their overall philosophy, you know that they trust their quarterback. He's been able to throw it well. If they continue to throw these safe passes, who can blame them? They'll run on first down. Samuels. And not much running room. Down to the 32. Give him a couple on the carry there. Second and eight. Brandon, I've got to think this offensive line has got some smiles on its faces. And I know it sounds crazy, 
but they practiced for this back in training camp. They knew they'd be in situations where it'd be extra defenders in the box coming after them, trying to keep them from locking down a game. Right now, they want to show the world they're up to the challenge. Over the middle, and it's incomplete. He shook his head right when he released that throw. He knew it was going to be a little off target. Yeah, the excitement got him on that one. Wasn't able to control the fact the receiver was open, and it would have been an easy throw. The Steelers on third down. They've converted six times and could use a seventh here. This is third and eight. Throwing for his running back, and he's got him complete. And inside the 20 before he's brought down. It's a Pittsburgh first down, a gain of 13. But normally you might say start running the football. You've got the lead here in the fourth quarter. But the way that they've passed it with such success, I don't know, maybe keep throwing it. Yeah, I think you brought up something that goes against conventional wisdom, right? In this stage of the game, you would think you would switch to a running attack, but you're exactly right. They've thrown it so... And he's in! Touchdown, Steelers! Deontay Johnson on the other end of the throw from Ben Roethlisberger. And the Steelers find a way to stretch their lead. They were still throwing with a comfortable lead here late, and now that lead even more comfortable. And your first thought is, is there bad blood that went into this one ahead of time that maybe they're seeking some revenge or they just don't like them? But the other thing that always hits me is, are they worried about playoff positioning? Right? Are they worried about, do you need enough points in case there's a tiebreaker that comes into play later? Boswell now to kick it away after the touchdown. Peoples-Jones returning. And he'll go down as this drive will start at the 25-yard line. Here comes the Browns offense back onto the field. Mayfield going to lead the Browns up now, first and 10 at their own 25-yard line. And from the shotgun, he'll throw. This pass complete to Higgins. And he'll get it up near the 35, right at the 34 here. Decent start to the drive, but let's face it, they need a lot of things to go right in a short amount of time down three scores. Yeah, they're going to run their two-minute offense here in this game, but this is for future games. Can they get better and be ready for the next time, hopefully with a chance to win? They still need about the length of the football here, maybe a little less as they come up on second and inches. A throw on the quick slant, going to be complete. And he'll get up to the 43-yard line. Nine yards to pick up there, and it's a first down. You can see the time and effort and thought that they put into their passing game because it was evident right there. It looks like a simple pitch and catch, but you and I both know that they have planned for this and worked hard to make it happen. Mayfield on first down, and this will be incomplete. Physical play on the football there, and it's second down. He did a fine job there of not hitting him before the ball arrived, and I've got to tell you, you can often mistime that play because of the angles of approach. When you're going to get him, sometimes you panic as well and think, I've got to be there right now. Instead, in this case, timed it perfectly and knocked it free. Mayfield completes it to Higgins, and he'll work it across midfield inside the 45. A gain of 13, it's a first down. Well, that was a fun one to watch right there. A nice in-breaking route and plenty of room in the middle of the field, and he was able to get behind the linebackers and grab the completion for a really good pickup. Operating out of Steeler territory now. Here's first and 10 at the 43. 
Going to the air again with Mayfield. Throwing over the middle, but it's incomplete. Well, the trials and tribulations of being a quarterback in this league, it's tough. It's got to be wearing on him out there. Well, he has been sacked a number of times. He had an interception, so I'm going to give him a skosh of credit for hanging in there and trying to make something happen, despite the amount of pressure he's been under this entire game. On second down, Mayfield again. And that is incomplete. A lot of force bearing down on him there. He could not hang on. It's third down. And that's one of those plays where it's hard to keep two eyes on the football when you know the contact's coming, let alone getting two hands around it, hugging it to your body, and absorbing the hit, even for those big tight ends who you would think could absorb that contact. On third down, Mayfield. And that will be incomplete. Well, it just seems like all game long, there hasn't been a lot of sync quarterback to wide receiver on this side of the football. They haven't been on the same page, quarterback and receivers. Heck, they haven't been on the same grease board when you draw plays up. They haven't been on the same surface tablet that you look at on the sidelines. Nothing's worked for them. They've got to find a way to start matching each other's movements. Oh, he's able to outmuscle him here as he pulls it in. Uh, no reason not to try it there, and they do indeed convert on fourth. Fourth down trailing in the fourth quarter. They felt compelled to go for it, and they got it. Well, I'd look down at my play sheet, and what I would find, plays have been successful throughout the game that have worked at the distance you need, and that's exactly what they got done. Mayfield now looking to throw on first down. Open man is Higgins, and taking it to the 15-yard line before he's brought down. 15 more there, and they're on a roll. It's another first down. Well, this game was decided a while ago, and that completion there is going to artificially inflate his passing numbers. So right now, the only one really applauding probably his agent as he thinks about angling for a new contract. On first down, they'll run with Hunt. And he's able to break out a one tackle, but then quickly brought down. The ball carrier. Call it a gain of four on first, and that'll make it second down. Not too many offenses want to turn down long drives, but when you're down what they are, they've got to pay it off with some points. Following the pickup of four, here's second and six. Back to the ground, this time it's Chubb. And here he'll get it down to the seven. Give him four on the carry, and it'll make this a third and about two. On any running play that's called, they're always hoping that it's gonna break big and go the distance. But when you get a nice game like that, you're able to do so many things anyway. You can come back and run essentially the same play again, continue to move the ball on the ground, or you can decide to throw the ball now because usually you have the defense back on its heels. Yeah, he's got it. And inside the five here before he's out of bounds, right at the three. Give him a gain of four, able to convert, and that sets up first and goal now. Clock management, definitely critical here if they want to get back in this game. Absolutely agree. They have to up the tempo in this case, down a couple of scores, want to make sure they have a chance to win this ball game. They'll give it to Chubb. And he's going to get this back to the three-yard line and no further. So the ball position now at the three. Here's second and goal. What we got? What we got? 91 in the mic. Working out of the gun, Mayfield. And that's going to be caught for a Browns touchdown. Taewon Taylor there to make the grab. And the Browns get a score closer. I'm not sure win-win is the proper term here, but it certainly felt like it. They got the touchdown they needed, but if I'm on the defensive side of the ball, okay, you got the touchdown, but it sure took you a long time. Yeah, because offensively, though, you're probably hoping for a one-to-five play drive. That one ate up a little more time than they were hoping. You're exactly right, and if you have that one-to-five play drive, you actually build up momentum and even more hope. And when they had to slog their way downfield, they got the touchdown, but it's almost like, ah, yeah, you know. It doesn't feel right. Exactly. I'm
Two scores down, three timeouts left. Still a chance if they can somehow get this one back. And this doesn't work. The Steelers recover it. Onside kick. They knew they needed a miracle. They had to have that onside kick. They didn't get it. Well, as we knew, even before they put the, the toe to the leather on that one, their chances of getting that done, slim and none. And I do believe we saw Slim just leave the door, didn't we? We did indeed. I think we're down to none. On first and ten is Connor. Now the Browns will use the first of their three timeouts as they'll talk things over prior to this upcoming second down play. And Pittsburgh getting set to take the field. And a few kneel downs should come very close to finishing this one off, depending on whether or not we see any defensive timeouts. They still have two, but using them would just be prolonging what's really already been decided. The first down run got five. Here's second and five. They'll stay on the ground with Connor again. And he's dropped just before the line to gain. Four-yard pickup leaves him with third and one. Now the Browns signal for the second of their timeouts as they'll talk it over here before what'll be an important third down. They'll try and run for it with Connor. And he is going to have the first down, and that is going to suck the life right out of this crowd. The Browns will quickly use their third and final timeout, and they'll be disappointed to have to burn one there after giving up the first down. And we'll see if the defense wants to stop it as they take the knee. <laughs> On second down, Connor looking for space. So they get half of what they needed. It'll be third and six upcoming. Charles, why didn't they just take the knee there? You're asking the question that I'm asking as well because we've seen a lot of football where coaches decide maybe they get a little greedy. I don't know if they're doing it for stats or for what reason. We've seen it happen in college. How about in the NFL? The miracle of the Meadowlands. All they had to do was take a knee and the game was over. The Giants ran it one more time. Ball popped free. Philadelphia picks it up and wins the game. What year was that? 1978. I think it was in November. Could just run this clock out, but here is the field goal unit on fourth down. This to make it a three-score game late. So this one in the win column for the Pittsburgh Steelers. And I know I'm not breaking any news when I say that any road win in this league is a good one. No doubt. But it's a double bonus when you get a victory on the road in your division. And when you start a season... Each team breaks down their schedule in different ways. Some do it every four games, right? Let's go quarterly. Others say, listen, we've got to take care of our home field. And, you know, out of a 16-game season, if you get eight at home, let's at least win seven at home and split our road games. That's what you're trying to get done. So you're exactly right. A road win, precious, especially within the division. That'll do it for us, for Charles Davis and all our hardworking crew. I'm Brandon Gordon. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. For more, find us on Twitter at EA Madden NFL. With that, we say good night from Cleveland.